Morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so this week uh, has been a bit different. I've uh, entertained a Saw Farmer of the Year farm walk and uh, met uh, a few of you viewers on the walk. So thank you very much for coming. Um, it was really interesting, good, good debate. And as I said at the time, you know, this is a journey. I don't have all the answers and I want you know I want dialogue I want to try and support you guys who are also going through those the journey and for people who are thinking about the journey to regenerative agriculture so let's support each other um, hence put some comments below of any observations you, you you're making on your farm and uh, we'll try and uh, understand what's going on better together so today I'd like to focus on a couple of things uh, we have recently completed our uh, crop planning meeting. My farm's roughly split into 150 hectares of regenerative and 150 of conventional. And so, um, and conventional's mostly on the land owned by my father. And uh, it's quite, uh, he's very taken by this uh, effort to split the farm as a sort of a, a large scale trial and uh, we work quite hard to split the rotation so that there's always a, a comparison uh, a regenerative comparison to a conventional uh, so today uh, i'm in this field with a lovely sea of black grass behind you um, and i just wanted to explain why so during our crop planning meeting this field or this block of fields was just i'll carry on turning around so uh, this block of fields was discussed. This is um, wet, this field. Um, it's sort of wet down there, but especially wet in this field here. It's sort of a uh, very uh, dark soil. And in fact, um, has a huge, that next field has a huge uh, drainage scheme underneath it. And once we managed to get our combine stuck at the top of the fields here, and uh, the wet hole it got stuck in was less than a meter from a drain so it just gives you some idea of how heavy this land is now the reason for stopping here is that i posted a video in the autumn of us spinning wheat on with a fertilizer spinner and cultivating it in with a uh, springtime cultivator uh, this field did have a pre-em, but it didn't have um, Avidex. So what I want to do is just um, do a head count and uh, show you a, a, the effect of a, me a mega seed rate. Uh, we were spinning it on, we we're taking no chances. We, want, we were going, as you can see, it's got big black grass pressure. So we wanted to do a pre-em. Obviously, we disturbed the surface far more than we would like to with the, with the establishment method, but it's certainly better than not getting a crop in at all. So what I would like to do is just do a head count and then just show you uh, how it's how we've managed to progress through the year. So um, the other point that I'd like to raise is there's been a little bit of uh, chat this week or the last 10 days on uh, Twitter about the breeding program and how a lot of varieties are based on Robigus because of its orange blossom midge resistance and then a couple of people have picked up on the fact that their regenerative crops um, they're seeing a lot more beneficials and I'd like to just pick up on some footage that I've managed to pick up this year uh, demonstrating that nature is uh, awake to the danger and they are trying to defend my crops. Okay, so we're in a field of rape here and there are occasional plants like this one that are infected with mealy aphid. But what's really encouraging is just the number of ladybirds that are here. So here is some footage from uh, in one of these tram lines in this field where we've got spiders actively controlling orange blossom mid. 
Okay, so uh, I've now travelled where I did my initial talk was uh, sort of up on the hill and I'm now right down in the base. And this is the point I, I showed you where the combine got stuck years ago. And you really can see, uh, firstly, even how wet it, it remains. The water's only just left. And you can see how thin the plant population is. Obviously, if you're going to establish by spinning it on and cultivating it in uh, a wet patch like this is not going to be your you know most uh, pressing place to bait and establish a crop and really um, that brings me to the next point really I've had a couple of examples yesterday I was out doing the thankless task of topping a black grass in a standing crop of wheat and uh, I I hadn't actually done any topping in this field but I just wanted to show you uh, this area which is really symptomatic of problems with establishment. If you get any type of thin crop it gets replaced with black grass. Now I would say that both the area I was topping yesterday and the area today are wet spots. I've heard it described as a marsh plant. It is wet conditions that encourage blackgrass establishment. Which brings me to a point that was actually raised on the farm walk, which was, I took them to the fields where the, uh, there's growing spring oats this year, where this the soil health improves dramatically and, and a crop uh, increases in height. And there was a, a, an audible intake of breath at that point. And that expression that John Kempf has, that basically we've been farming degraded soils for so long that actually that it degraded is our norm rather than healthy soils and what a healthy crop actually looks like. And, and really building on that is is it just the case that we've we are farming sad degraded soils with poor drainage and that is why we're getting black grass and that black grass is actually just showing us how bad our soil is i was actually surprised as i walked out here i actually thought um none of my regenerative fields have this level of intensity of black grass Yes, they have black grass, but not like this. And so I wonder if actually uh, by improving soil health, even if it's just through worm activity, improving drainage, um, and that will be overwinter cover crops to help it slower infiltration of rain, so there's less pooling. Um, I wonder if that will be a sort of side benefit of improving soil health. Um, so, anyway, something to see in the long run, so not something we're going to see this year. So, thank you very much everybody. Please uh, subscribe, give us a thumbs up to the channel, and uh, harvest is fast approaching, so um, exciting uh, results soon to follow.